Now you may remember a while ago that I asked you what series I should read between Tower of God and God of High School. The series that won that was Tower of God, and eventually I said I'd get around to reading it and making a video on it. Finally, after all of this time, I've managed to read it. The caveat being that it's almost 500 chapters, and there's no way I'm going to condense talking about a series with 500 odd chapters within a singular video. And no, I have not read that much either. So here we are now. I have read close to 100 chapters. Originally that was my goal, so I could kind of do uh, one video per 100 chapters and it was kind of like a continuous update and uh, journey with Tower of God considering it's so long. But I actually stopped at the end of season 1 and I have not touched season 2 as of yet. I have a lot of things to say about this series and going into Tower of God I knew absolutely nothing. The only thing I did know is that I heard from a lot of people that the artwork progressively gets a whole lot better after after season one. And then some people added on top of that that even the story gets a whole lot better after season one. So basically season one is more so the test trial of Tower of God that definitely builds a lot of different things and introduces you to the story, its characters, its foundation really, but it gets supposedly a whole lot better after 80 plus chapters. So I guess only time will tell in that regard. I had a very interesting experience with Tower of God and its first 80 chapters. Mind you, if you don't know what Tower of God is, it is a webtoon. It's extremely popular and I believe it just recently got an anime. Because I'm such a large connoisseur of webtoons, reading a total of five at this point, Tower of God was my next opponent to tackle and I think a lot of you aren't necessarily going to like what I have to say about it. My enjoyment for these 80 chapters was very minimalistic, just somewhat like the story itself. And I say that with the most respect because I can see what the author and artist are trying to do. I can see the potential within a lot of these characters within a lot of these concepts and uh, themes being played upon but at least for the first 80 chapters it is not utilized nor handled rather well it is very bare bones at times it's very simplistic and sometimes feels like it doesn't even know what it wants to portray whether it be in terms of information whether it be emotionally whether it be atmospherically and it leads you down to this path of not really sure on how you should feel in terms of this story this is what I felt while reading Tower of God. And I will admit that it was the hardest thing to overcome because genuinely I was kind of bored. There was definitely good moments within it, don't get me wrong. But a lot of the time I felt like things either was overly bloated or very weirdly placed and conceptualized. Like why would these two characters do this? Or why would the main character not do this? Or why would he think this type of way? And not to mention a lot of the other concepts that are intertwined, like the character personalities themselves are extremely bland, some more than others. In all honesty, I found myself just somewhat bored, but I wanted to power through it and it started to progressively pick up and get a little bit better for myself towards the ending of season one. And that's not because I think season two is going to be better. I think it's just because of the ending situation of season one regarding this very specific test that's taking place is a lot more climatic, a lot more emotional, and has a lot more personality intertwined within it. Not only within different characters, but within the situation that is going on. With that somewhat overview being said, the first and foremost biggest problem that I have going directly into this story, and I still currently have issues with, is the main character himself. Balm, Bam, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. I'm going to pronounce it Balm just because I feel it fits better, but if it's the other one, I apologize. Balm for me, right now, 80 chapters, very difficult to even enjoy. Every time I see this man on screen, I know I'm not really in for a good time because he is extremely flat, boring, and unenergetic towards anything. And the way he is propelled through the story is by circumstance and luck. Now, I assume later on within this story, this is going to be retroactively fixed and somewhat even updated on the reasoning why he was propelled through the story because they somewhat hinted regarding him being a person called an irregular. But you only get the confirmation for this information towards the ending of season one, which really does nothing for you because you knew there was something different about him with how he entered the tower to begin with, but everything goes against him, yet he still propels further. 
Plot convenience is a very standard thing. It is within pretty much every single narrative that you will experience where the beauty of plot convenience lies and the skillfulness of the author themselves is how well they can hide it within plain sight. Tower of God does not hide plot convenience. It outright kind of just lets it all loose and it's very obvious. Now plot convenience isn't necessarily a bad thing that breaks your story. However, if you're not a fan of it or if it's not hidden in any sort of regard nor explained or backed up to any sort of degree it honestly just seems extremely fickle and the reception towards it is not going to be great this is exactly what tower of god does it takes this character that only slightly hints to him being completely different but never gives you any sort of reasoning or understanding of why or the capabilities or potentials for it other than other characters that are basically or borderline gods within the tower themselves but even then the sort of information and how it's streamlined to you is not very clear. By this point you've already witnessed a lot of plot convenient moments that allow Balm to uh, explore further within the tower and pass these tests that that originally he probably shouldn't have just by luck itself just by plot convenience it really does nothing to try and rectify this let alone hide it so you kind of just take it on the chin and for me personally it just felt extremely forced in that regard that they didn't really care about hiding it or even trying to explain it or tease it even further instead they give you bits and pieces here and there when they feel like it and lead you on your way it's weird because Balm does not feel like a main character if anything by the end of season one he still is not the main character in my eyes and that's in terms of enjoyment how much attention is played upon him how much he is written how much emotion he shows his growth is only in the form of how much power he has recently gained but his mind his emotions are so borderline simplistic and scarily underdeveloped and I understand that the past or the history that he was brought upon is very enclosed there's not much he can realistically know about about. However, you would think that they would try and play on this a little bit more to make him a somewhat relatable character or at least someone that you can understand the, the pain and the suffering or the struggle that he went through while he was alone. He has none of this. His personality is borderline a brick wall and is very easily forgettable, especially when you have other characters that effortlessly outshine him like Kun or Androssi. Both of those characters I felt took a little bit of time to build up towards, but once the flow of their character came out, once the author felt comfortable with them, they started to outshine basically every other character that wasn't anywhere near that level, and unfortunately that includes the main character. Now I am hoping that Balm goes through the motions and changes as a character, which pretty sure he most likely will throughout 400, 500 plus chapters, but just with what they've teased, what they've built upon within the background and didn't necessarily play upon it within the first 80 chapters, I can see a very bright future for him with how much he grows as an individual, with how his mind starts to structure itself with the emotions he betrays and potentially the hard decisions that he has to make. That's a character that I'm obviously eager to see and eager to see him grow into. Unfortunately, they start you way before that and it doesn't really do much to get you situated to his character. Even though they try to make his growth noticeable throughout the first season, it's rarely impactful nor empowering until the end. The only time that I was genuinely interested to see what he had to say or do or react emotionally, mentally, physically was right at the end. And it took a very massive moment within the story between two characters, him and someone else, Else to really push him to that limit and understand the situation further, which makes me excited for season two. I just wish there was a little bit more fluidity towards all of that throughout all of season one and wasn't so stagnant. In a sense, I feel the other characters somewhat make up for it. There's a lot of enjoyable people here that you can connect yourself to, and you might like Kun, you might like Androssi, Rock. I absolutely despise Rachel as a character. I think she's just horrendous, but I am willing to give her a chance and just to see what comes from her. The idea of the main character chasing her is not one I'm necessarily fond with, especially because a lot of things he does or decisions he makes directly contradicts him continuing to chase her. And there was this weird moment when like his goal is literally in front of him, but he would do nothing about it. And when I say in front of him, I mean they were sitting across the table from one another and he wouldn't go out of his way to walk three whole steps or even just yell at her to talk about the whole situation and everything that's going on. I thought it was very silly, very convenient that it was 
somewhat shaped in that way because of how the story kind of directs you. However, this somewhat comes full circle towards the end of season one and you understand why she is the way she is and somewhat why Balm is the way he is to a degree. I still think it's weirdly handled and not enjoyable to read because both of those people, the main people of the story, are hardly characters to begin with. There was a couple of other things that I felt was rather odd. The description towards the tower, or just like the world building in itself, is convoluted. Because of how bare minimum or simplistic the artwork is, which I don't necessarily have a problem with, I think the artwork is fine in that regard, but when it comes to either showcasing the terrain or the tower or the room or whatever place they're in, it does not do a good job in giving you the full understanding of the situation. If anything, it makes you even more more confused on what the hell is actually going on. There's definitely some very beautiful and pretty panels that look very atmospheric at times, but the majority that focus on terrain or location or understanding the whole situation in itself, it's very difficult to really picture what is going on. And then it comes off convoluted and then you're even more confused on where these characters are, what they're doing, what type of terrain they're on, or how far they are from from the destination they need to be. Which unfortunately when you have stuff like this, the information that comes along with it also becomes convoluted. And by the end of it, you're just somewhat confused. The explanation for the tower is very simplistic, yet the way they showed it was probably the weirdest thing that you could do. But when you think about a tower with a lot of different floors that are extremely difficult that you have to fight all of these things in, it's very hard to picture that tower from the outside, especially because these floors are so massive and how you get from each individual floor floor is not just walking up a set of stairs or taking an elevator, you have to do specific things or tests to go up to the next floor. Then there's a bunch of different magical and power elements that come into play that really open things up further, but when you reflect on what the tower looks like from an outside perspective or how they explained it with such a simple explanation, but the depiction of it was so bare bones and didn't really do a good job in showcasing what the tower looked like, you get to this point where you don't know what the tower actually actually is. At this point, I just think of a tower as this endless building that is absolutely ginormous. The reason I say it like this is because the intrigue for outside the tower is almost non-existent. It's there subconsciously because people are stuck within the tower and coming from outside the tower into the tower to fulfill their dreams, but the way they describe the outside, extremely not interesting. Which is surprising because I want to know personally what is outside the tower. Is it just a wasteland? Is it some sort of experience? Experiment. I don't necessarily know why this tower is the thriving metropolis for every single being. I understand that it gives people power and that basically makes their wishes and desires come true, but what is outside of it? And you somewhat get this from Balm and Rachel regarding their flashback and where they come from, but it is the utmost simplistic and hardly informative situation that you could really ask for. It does not do enough to really warrant any sort of those questions, and it kind of just seems like he's stuck in a cave. In reality, it could be as simple as that, but with how they depict it and how they want to showcase it and the artwork that reflects it, it's very difficult to palette and even understand cohesively what's going on. As much as it may seem like I'm absolutely destroying or hating on Tower of God, for the most part, I enjoyed the second half of season one. I think the first half was extremely difficult for me to get through. I found it rather boring, and there was nothing at that point in time wanting me to read further. No characters really felt too interesting, the main character was still non-existent, and the intrigue towards the tower or even outside of it was non-existent. However, halfway through the story, when a bit of consistency started to build up and other characters start to shine and a little bit more information and lore regarding the tower started to come in, I found myself somewhat enjoying it. Now when I say somewhat enjoying it, I wasn't sitting back in my chair and yelling with excitement, I was more so just happy that I could finally read this with the enjoyment and want to see where it goes next. And even by the end of season one, I am intrigued to see how season two handles things. Does it most likely fix the complaints I have for season one? Does it expand upon them and make these characters shine even further and grow and do a lot of different things to evolve this story into its next iteration or step? I am definitely excited to see, and hopefully that should come soon.
So with that being said, that is basically it. I apologize for this video being rather lengthy, but I definitely would love to hear your thoughts on Tower of God Season 1. Does it get better within Season 2? Should I expect decent or good things to come from it? Once again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Drink plenty of water and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.